None of the people telling you to worry about coronavirus are actually worried about coronavirus. Let's you and I have a tough talk tonight. Also, Liz Wheeler joins us. All that's coming up on I'm Right. More restrictions, more guidelines. We have to. We have to, don't we? I mean, after all, this is a deadly, deadly disease. It could kill millions of us. And if we don't lock down and wear your 10 masks and get your 19 vaccines and drown in hand sanitizer, we're all going to die, aren't we? Or are we? Now, let's, let's pause for a moment before I get to our story. You know about the Black Plague, the Black Death, whatever you want to call it? I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of details, but just know, at one point in time, the bubonic plague, it broke out. Kind of came from China area. We're not going to go into the details, but it ended up in Europe. And it ended up in Europe. And wrap your mind around this. This is, I find these stats to be amazing. But they estimate, they don't even know, they estimate one-third to one-half of Europe's population died in a short period of time. Half the population died. Could you picture that? Picture that everybody you know in your life. And people you see on TV, people you know personally, family, friends. Picture Thanos getting the glove and snapping it, and half of them gone. Can you even imagine living in that time? The fear that must have come with living in that time, with watching everyone around you die. They still have churches today built on top of mass graves. They're just throwing people in ditches, just trying to get rid of them. All right, now I only bring that up to bring this up. If people were genuinely afraid, like they were back during the Black Death, if people were genuinely afraid of coronavirus, like they were back then, don't you think they would be acting afraid? I mean, do you think the political leaders back in the Black Death days, do you think they told people, they, they talked to some doctors, whatever, as good as the doctors were back then, and do you think they talked to some doctors and found out, well, I mean, the solution is you really should stay home. And do you think the political leaders back then would tell the people, all right, everybody, stay home? And then they would just go out? Well, no, they wouldn't go out. Because they would be personally afraid. They wouldn't want to go out. Because if they went out, they were worried they would die. Why do you think our politicians are constantly being busted, violating their own rules with coronavirus? Why do you think that is? Because you can scream all day long, and Jesse, it's because they're hypocrites. It, yeah, yeah, I know that. They're hypocrites. One, we all are. Two, all politicians are to an extreme. So set that aside. I know they're hypocrites. Why would they constantly be caught violating their own rules? It doesn't make sense unless you consider something. Now, I know this is hard. This is actually going to be very hard for people to consider because of what it means. But what if... What if they're not worried about coronavirus? What if all the people in the know, what if they know all the details about coronavirus and they're not worried about it? They're not worried about getting it. They're not worried about spreading it to family and friends. They're not worried about it. What does that mean? What does that mean if you take a step back, take a 30,000 foot view of it, what does that mean for everything we've done as a nation? When you consider our insane coronavirus response and the lockdowns and the bankruptcies and the suicides and the death and the substance abuse and the kids who are in it, when you consider everything our lockdown policy did, what does it mean if it was all a lie? What if it was all a lie? I mean, we know lockdowns don't work. That's not debatable anymore. 
They can lie about that all you want. We have the areas that opened up very early on before mass vaccination, places like Florida, South Dakota, Texas, and whatnot, and they didn't see any kind of a spike over the areas that did lockdown. Lockdowns do not work. What we did with coronavirus does not work. It didn't work at all. It's not effective at stopping the virus. The thing's going to spread around. Everyone's going to get it. But what if all that misery was based on lies? I don't know how we can look at the conduct of these individual politicians and come to any other conclusion than it's all based on lies. Mayor Bowser, she's the mayor of D.C., of course, just announced lockdowns again. Sorry. Masks required. Everybody go home. Immediately. Immediately busted what? Busted at a gigantic wedding reception, which, if I remember right, she actually hosted pictured with family and friends, no mask on. Now, you can yell and scream at that picture and say, what a hypocrite. No, you're taking the wrong lessons. Yes, she's a hypocrite, but she's not worried about coronavirus. Here's her response. She wasn't actually, as far as we know, violating the new rules, correct? I think that that is fair to say, but I think it, it might also be about, is she violating the spirit of it? The question is, you know, whether or not she did anything functionally, policy-wise wrong, and I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it really depends on if she was eating or drinking at the time she was photographed not wearing a mask. Yeah, I mean, I look at the photo and I see it, it seems like it could be during the toast, right? Everyone's heads are pointed in a certain direction. It seems like maybe they are listening to someone. So they're listening. I mean, was she eating or drinking? I don't know. We don't have to quibble about the details. They want you quibbling about the details. They want you thinking, well, I mean, maybe she was eating peanuts. When in reality, if this was the Black Plague times and they really thought everybody was going to die, they wouldn't have been at a wedding reception. It's time for us to accept some things. You've seen this latest headline about Barack Obama? He's turning 60, right? That's a big event. You know, you turn 60, especially when you're a dignitary. You have to do that thing where you plan a massive party and invite every rich and famous person you know. It's a status thing. Look, at some point, we'll probably all get to it. But Barack Obama came out. 700 people. Six to 700 people expected at Barack Obama's birthday bash. The Obamas have been all over the television warning you about coronavirus. Well, why would they? That's crazy. It's not crazy when you realize they're not worried about coronavirus. Barack Obama isn't worried about it. Michelle Obama isn't worried about it. None of their hotel staff are worried about it. None of the elites who show up to that event who've told you to wear your mask and hide in lockdown, none of them are worried about coronavirus. They're not worried about getting it. They're not worried about spreading it. What about Lori Lightfoot? I mean, she's, remember, she's been busted already in the past, right at the beginning of coronavirus. In the beginning, when she told everybody, close your business, don't do this, you're not allowed to get your hair cut. And then she got busted out getting her crew cut done. Oh, well, wouldn't you know, gets busted again. She's really worried about coronavirus, right? And then she gets pictured maskless at a 100,000 person Lollapalooza music festival oh yeah they're all doing it they're all doing it all of them i don't have time on this show to go down the list of all the politicians who've been busted but again i can't repeat this enough it's not that they're hypocrites they're not worried about coronavirus so if they're not worried about coronavirus then we have to ask ourselves this question what do they get out of worrying you about coronavirus. Here's Andrew Cuomo telling businesses Private what he businesses, wants to do. I am asking them and suggesting to them go to vaccine only admission. Private businesses, bars, restaurants, go to a vaccine only admission. I believe it's in your best business interest. You know, Oh, of course. It's, it's absolutely in your best business interest to turn away half your customers, haven't you seen? Hey, welcome to Applebee's. Come on in, have a seat. 
Wait a minute, do you have your vaccine card? Oh, uh, oh, uh, where are you going? Uh, come back and eat. Yeah, it's definitely in your best business interest for sure. These people aren't worried. By the way, that's another guy, Andrew Cuomo, very early on during the pandemic, when he was out there on TV selling that fear every single day, everyone's gonna die, millions, we're dying here, busted at a party. No masks, hugging people, patting people on the back. Not because he's a hypocrite, because he's not worried about coronavirus. And I know what you're saying right now, but Jesse, what about the Delta variant? Ah, oh, it's so scary, Delta. Well, I know why you're scared. You've seen headline after headline after headline about all the cases. Cases are up, arising cases. Cases are rising, things are rising. Why don't, why don't we hear about deaths? Why are we hearing about cases? Just people testing positive? I don't understand. Well, I understand, because there's no significant loss of life coming with Delta variant. They didn't tell you that, did they? Oh, yeah, cases are up. It's a, it's a virus. Things are going to happen seasonally. That's what happens. But it's not deadly. I mean, it's not deadly to most people. Why can't we just have an adult conversation about what coronavirus is? Yes, it's a virus. It's real. It attacks the lungs. If you're an old person, you're at danger. You're in danger from it. You need to protect yourself. If you're fat, you're in danger. You need to protect yourself. Try to do what you can to stay safe. Lose the weight if you can. If you have a lung, lung condition, you're in danger. We have a year and a half of data now. We know who's a danger and who's not. And the real honest truth is, and all these politicians know it, all of them who've been busted out at their events and weddings and parties and everything else, all of them know it. The real truth of the matter is this. Coronavirus isn't that deadly. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I'm right. We got a great show for you tonight. We got Liz Wheeler coming up next. She always rocks it. But first and foremost, you know your holster is more than just a pouch, right? It's, it has to actually function, or I should say it has to not fail. You really, really, really need your holster to not fail when you need it most. And if you buy some cheap piece of bulk made junk, that's what they do. They wear down over time and wear down over time and wear down over time. And then God forbid, you actually have to pull out your weapon in a situation when you need it and it fails. Stop with that. Get a custom made, made in America holster from Northwest Retention Systems. Everything I have is from Northwest Retention Systems. My sling, my holsters, my mag carriers, I won't buy anything else. I know how important quality is. Quality saves lives when it comes to this stuff. Go to nwretention.com. That's nwretention.com. Use the promo code JESSE. That gets you 10% off. Let's have some fun. We'll be back. I imagine you see the benefit of students masking uh, going forward as the school year opens. Exactly, exactly. So that's why the next question about will they stay open, that's where we worry because when you have lots of kids, particularly every child under 12 has not been vaccinated. Yeah. We see the Delta variant being very transmissible. And so... That's why what masks do is masks stop transmission. So universal masking is going to be very helpful to keep kids safe. Mm, it's going to be very, haven't you heard masks work? I mean, no one can explain why there's all these areas that were heavily masked and they still had a bunch of spread. No one can explain that, but they work. Just put the diaper on your face. Joining me now, the host of the Liz Wheeler Show herself, Liz Wheeler. Liz, help me understand something. Now, I understand teachers' unions are garbage and all the coronavirus lockdowns are crap and all that other stuff. I get all that. Why would a teachers' union be so committed to making life miserable for parents and kids? Because even for dirty communists like teachers' unions, it seems kind of self-defeating, no? I mean, I, I think their name is completely incongruent with what their, what their policy preferences are. They are Marxists. They want to use public schools as Marxist indoctrination centers, and part of that is controlling the people and controlling the children. First of all, what kind of idiot parent would 
give the COVID vaccine to their child under 12. An unvaccinated 12-year-old has the same likelihood of dying from COVID as a vaccinated 30-year-old. And by the way, unvaccinated 30-year-olds have basically no chance of dying from uh, COVID either. I, I would never in a million years put a mask on my child, ever, ever, ever. If parents ever need an excuse to pull their child out of these government-run schools, which is what we should call public schools, government-run indoctrination centers, the time is now. You can see that they're using your child as pawns. Masks are not scientific, and they never have been. We knew this long before COVID. We're not waiting for the data to come in. In fact, this idea that my mask protects you was widely debunked years ago because in operating rooms, surgeons who wear masks do not have an outcome of fewer infections in their patients, meaning they do not transmit fewer viruses or bacteria because they are because their face is covered. I mean, we knew this all along. Teachers unions are garbage and we should we should defund them all. Okay, so I guess the million dollar question is, or actually if you do the math on it, about multi-trillion dollar question is, why all the masks then, Liz? Where did this come from? Well, why all the masks? I mean, it's it's pretty easy. It's one word answer here, and the answer is control. Um, there, there are certain things in life, Jesse, that we don't have any control over. We don't have any control over whether we get sick. I mean, we can, we can take basic common sense precautions, but that's not what the government was interested in from the beginning of this pandemic. If they were, they would have told fat people to lose weight because obesity besides age is one of the highest predictors of COVID fatality. They would have told people to take vitamin D to bolster their immune system, to go out in the sun, to be outdoors, to be active. They would have told people um, to bolster their immune system so that you could naturally fight this off. They would have told people that, yeah, if you're young and healthy, you don't have that high of a likelihood of dying from COVID. It's pretty small, in fact. And they would have told old people who were at risk to do common sense precautions that maybe would prevent them from getting more severe cases and dying from it. But they didn't want to do any of those things. They wanted to use this um, as a way to spark fear in people's hearts, because when you spark fear, you can call something an emergency and people in fear will turn over their rights and their liberties. They will turn over power to the government. That's what these government bureaucrats crave. They crave power. They want to centralize authority in the state away from the people. And face masks are the perfect way to do that. And I mean, that's why we see what's happening now. In my opinion, the reason that they're renewing these mask mandates is not because any wave is getting more serious. No, it's because they see the midterm elections creeping closer and closer and they they realize that in order to win the midterm elections when they have Biden as their incumbent, Kamala as their incumbent, they need those electioneering things that won them 2020. They need these unrestricted mail-in ballots. They need this lack of signature verification on absentee ballots. They need these early voting and this drop boxes around the clock and accepting ballots after the after the official legal dates. They need all of these different um, all of these different measures that happened in the 2020 election that they only implemented under the guise of saying, well, because of COVID, we have to have these measures. Public health, safety, it's saving you. We're doing this for you. They need all of that. And so they're starting it now again with masks. Liz, I think there is some bright shining, you know, there's a bright shining light in all this darkness in the last year and a half. And I'm not just talking about women leaving the workforce. I'm talking about people homeschooling their kids. I think it is an awesome thing. Homeschooling numbers are through the roof. Did Democrats kind of misread this one and how damaging it would be for them if generations of Americans start getting educated by their mothers at home and not by a communist teacher in school? No, listen, I'm particularly biased towards homeschooling in two ways. One, the data shows that it's far more effective. Children achieve higher educational outcomes and they are better socially prepared to be contributing citizens and adults, uh, self-sufficient, functional adults in society. I was also homeschooled, so that contributes a little bit to my bias, in addition to the data proving <laughs> um, my feelings correct here. I think um, the leftists underestimate conservatives because, and this is conservatives' fault, because conservatives have surrendered the public school system over the past 30, 40, 50 years, almost without even a fight. Conservatives just gave the radical leftists the public school system, so radical leftists think, well, there might be this wave of homeschooling, but we'll just come after homeschooling next. Mark my words, Jesse, that is the next wave of this battle, is liberals and radical leftists are going to try to restrict dictate and ultimately ban homeschooling um, as much as they possibly can through any kind of restriction, like making parents be certified as teachers because that would eliminate so many parents from being able to homeschool their children. Even though private schools aren't required to have certified teachers, they're going to try to mandate certain elements of curriculum that parents are forced to teach their kids. They're going to, in California a couple years ago, they tried to have government officials make home visits for homeschooling families, which is such a gross Phew. violation of privacy. And ultimately, they just want to eliminate homeschooling entirely, and they think they can do it because conservatives usually surrender this sort of thing. 
it would not be a good idea for a state official to come knock on my door and see how I'm raising my kids. <laughs> but anyway, that, that, that aside, Liz, are parents actually waking up to how bad our school system is, how communist our school system is, or our school system is, or do they just not like it that little Johnny has to wear a mask or has to stay home? What I'm asking is, are they really awake to what's happening, or are they only half awake and inconvenienced? I would have to give you a very resounding, I don't know. I'm waiting on the same information because my hope, of course, is that this is the big wake-up call, that parents realize that public schools are garbage, that their kids are being indoctrinated, that government is brainwashing their children, and they're achieving very low educational outcomes, wasting time, you know, learning poisonous ideologies really in school, and that parents don't just try to fix this system, that they completely discard the system, scrap it, and start over, abolish the Department of Education. That's my hope. What I fear is that parents think that these are more or less isolated incidents, and as they get involved, they can, yeah, maybe eradicate critical race theory from school, or maybe prevent their child from having to wear a mask if they're not sick, or, you know, maybe they speak out against, you know, the transgender ideology being taught to kindergartners in some public schools. That's what I fear parents um, will do, that they won't almost believe how deeply entrenched in our public school system the ideology of Marxism is. But that's, that's what I talk about every day on my show. I talk with parents, I listen to them, and I tell them what I know from my research in hopes that this really does, this really does awaken people to the reality of what's happening in our school system. Okay, Liz, switching gears here just a little bit. Big tech. We heard a lot about big tech leading up to the last election. Clearly, they were all in for the left in the last election. And now, obviously, the, these people are communists, so they don't back off. They're not going to look around and say, we've done enough. Are they getting more and more and more aggressive, or is it just me? No, they're certainly getting more aggressive. I mean, they now, they now ban any kind of information, not if it contradicts what they consider to be science, but just if it contradicts a government expert. I mean, that's the definition of propaganda and censorship, right? That's something that you would expect from communist China, that, oh, you good little communist minion, you're not allowed on, on whatever social media platform they have if you've contradicted you know, our dear leader. That's literally what's happening here now. I can't go on Facebook and post my opinion on masks, not because it contradicts any science, but because it contradicts what public health officials are, uh, are telling citizens of the United States to do. That in and of itself, and public health officials, by the way, aren't even elected officials. They're appointed, they're hired, they have no accountability to voters. Yet when they give us directions, which they shouldn't have any right to do in the first place, we're not even allowed to contradict them on big tech. Yeah, Jesse, we're in a whole, it's a whole different ballgame on big tech now. Liz Wheeler, go watch her. Liz Wheeler Show. Thank you so much, Liz. Thanks, Jesse. Look, I mean, it's not good right now, but don't discount that homeschooling thing. That is big. The reason we're in this pickle is generations, plural, of Americans have been educated in our anti-American public school system. If parents start pulling them out of that environment, that advantage for the communists goes away. So it's not all, not all bad news out there. All right. This part is bad, though. Home title theft is huge. It's huge. And since more and more of America has been working online, it's even gotten bigger. These cyber crooks are going nuts out there. If you have a home title, it's online. Listen to this guy. Nobody thinks that I can take their house and borrow against the house. Oh, no, I have title insurance for that. No, it's, it's in my name, or he would have to get some special document. They would call me. You know, nobody's calling you. After I've stolen the title, borrowed against it, or sold the property, or done whatever I've done with it, it's 60 to 90 days to even figure out that, that they're the victim of this crime. You know, by that point, you start getting foreclosure notices, and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house. Not only that, you don't even own your home anymore. It's not even in your name. You don't want to go through that. You don't want to get evicted. Or, look, the people who managed to not get evicted, you know what they have to do? spend tens of thousands of dollars on a lawyer to get the thing unwound. Do you have tens of thousands of dollars laying around you don't want? Go get Home Title Lock. HomeTitleLock.com. Use the promo code RADIO. Get you 30 days for free. They will protect your home title. We'll be back. They're very worried about coronavirus. Haven't you heard? I mean... We just had, I mean, we had Liz Wheeler on to talk about it. I opened up the show to talk about it. But what if, what if I'm wrong? What if they're not, you know, they're not blowing off coronavirus? What if they really are very serious about it? They're concerned. 
Millions might die, you know. They're worried about human life. They're worried about America. They don't want people to suffer and die from coronavirus. They're very worried about Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, CDC, all these Democrats. They're worried. Haven't you heard? They're very worried. Maybe I was wrong. If you'd like confirmation in the things I tell you, I'm about to present you with a great one. If the Biden administration was actually worried about coronavirus, we would never, ever, 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 ever in a million years see a scene like we're seeing right now on our southern border. What I'm about to show you, this is Mission, Texas. You know how many people were standing in this line you're looking at right there? A thousand, a thousand plus. You know those people aren't citizens of the United States of America. Those people are coming into this country. Those people are being allowed, in many cases, invited into this country by the Biden administration. You see, I don't care what you believe about coronavirus or what you believe about the border, but there is something you absolutely cannot do. It's not humanly possible. If you do this, you're the biggest hypocrite in the world. You cannot tell me I'm worried about coronavirus and in the next breath say, hey, illegal immigrants, come on down. Oh, none of you are vaccinated or really, we're not even really, I mean, we don't know anything, but come on in. We'll let you in here. Uh Uh-uh, coronavirus is deadly. Go home, lockdown, mask, we all might die. Hey, hey, woo Guatemala, send us your poor. You can't do it. It tells me. It's all the confirmation you need to know. These people aren't worried about coronavirus. Have you seen these charts of border crossings? Look at this chart. Look at our border crossings right now. We're facing a 20-year high at a time when they're telling you to be worried about coronavirus. Keep that chart on there. I want you to look at that chart, and I want you to, I want you to know this. The Joe Biden administration is spending millions and millions of dollars, I believe the number is $3 million, every single day to do what? To stop the construction of the border wall that was being built. Look at that chart. And then look at what they're telling you about coronavirus. And then no, they're not only just throwing their, their hands up and allowing people in, they're actively working so more people can get in. These people are not worried about coronavirus. They're not. They're simply not. And look, here's what's happening right now. We have so many illegal immigrants pouring into the country. Tens and tens of thousands all the time. They're pouring in here. The Biden administration, because they want to be the humane administration, but also have to try to be the coronavirus administration, they have to process these people. So what's happening is they're bringing them in and... For at least a time, they have to hold them while they process them, right? Well, these are large masses of people being housed together. You're looking at their housing. I mean, they're, they're always right there pressed together. So clearly, any infectious disease is going to spread like wildfire. We even have a whistleblower right now. What's that whistleblower saying? The Biden administration, well, they're claiming the Biden administration instructed them to downplay a coronavirus outbreak among the migrant children at a Texas facility. Quote, every effort was made to downplay the degree of COVID infection at the site and the size of the outbreak was deliberately kept under wraps. Deliberately kept under wraps. Well, yeah. We're inviting people in who have coronavirus. Lots of them. Then they spread it amongst themselves in their brief time at the holding facility. And then when they're done at the holding facility, we actually have more. When they're done at the holding facility, they're dropping these illegal immigrants off at charities, mostly Catholic charities across the United States of America. Why? Why would they do that? Well, because they don't want people taking pictures of a bunch of illegal immigrants stacked up like sardines in a, in a migrant facility that would bring back, you know, shades of the concentration camps we had to hear when Donald Trump was president. So instead, they're bringing people in, many of whom have coronavirus, getting them processed out, taking them to these Catholic charities. And I know what you're saying. All right, Jesse, well, I mean, what's happening from there? Where are they going? Everywhere. You see these Catholic charities... They not only provide the food, shelter, and water, 
They provide the bus tickets and the plane tickets, and they're sending illegal immigrants, many of whom have coronavirus, all over the United States of America. There might be one moving right next door to you. And no, the government isn't, quote, keeping tabs on them. In many cases, in most cases now, these illegal immigrants aren't even given a court date. Not even given a date where they have to come back and see whether or not they can stay in the country. Ah, uh, just, just stay here, buddy. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll let you know at some point in time if you have a court date. Now, back to what I said in the beginning. It doesn't matter really what you believe about coronavirus what you believe about the border. Maybe you disagree with me on everything. That's fine. But you cannot possibly say you care about coronavirus while leaving the United States border wide open. Only one of those things can be true. I think I know which one it is, don't you? Now, let's switch gears here for just a second. We have something funny going on politically. Remember, all the people in power, they all want to keep it. They all want more of it, and they all want to keep it. And I do enjoy when disgusting communists like the modern Democratic Party, I do enjoy when their own communism eats them alive. Do you remember back when Joe Biden was running for president, and there were 19 people in the Democratic primary, right? There was all kinds of people. Crazy Elizabeth Warren, even Eric Swalwell, who farted on national TV, he when he was in there. There were all these nutters in the Democratic primary. And Joe Biden... He's trying to play the middle of the road, but, 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 you know, lefty and left for all these people. Well, the modern Democratic Party, they are the party of victim politics. That's what they are. They are the party of woke politics. That's why they've gotten so disgusting so fast. So Joe Biden decides he has to play this game. And what's he do? I mean, they're, they're saying he's too moderate. All the communists who run the party think he's too moderate. What's Joe Biden going to do? Well, here's what Joe Biden does. He steps up. And in the all-time, didn't think it through move, Joe Biden says, if I am nominated, if I'm president, my vice president's going to be a woman. And then he thought about it for a second. He thought, wait a minute, that's not quite, that's not quite progressive enough. You know what? It's going to be a woman of color. Well, that's a really small pool of people to choose from. That meant as soon as Joe Biden got the nomination, he essentially had to choose from Stacey Abrams and Kamala Harris. There aren't a ton of black women he could choose from. He chose Kamala Harris. It was really the only choice he could make. Now, what does this have to do with anything? Well, the presidential election is coming in 2024. Joe Biden is not running again. I don't think anybody's under the impression he's still going to be president by the time 2024 rolls around which is going to mean Kamala Harris is president, which means Kamala Harris is the presumptive nominee. She's very likely going to represent the Democratic Party in 2024 against whoever the Republican nominee is, DeSantis, Trump, Cruz, whoever it is. Here's the problem. Those woke politics, very tolerant. Woman, woman of color. Look at me, I'm Progressive Joe. Those politics, they can bite you sometimes because Kamala Harris sucks. I mean, I'm not just talking about literally Kamala Harris. Polling now has Kamala Harris as the most unpopular vice president since the 1970s with an average favorability of 45% with respondents viewing her unfavorably at a point higher at 56%. And look, this is what's so wild about this whole Kamala Harris thing. She's always been unpopular. This is not something where Democrats are going to wake up today and see these poll numbers and say, whoa, people don't like Kamala. I had no idea. Remember, Kamala ran in that primary and she was the media darling right off the bat. She's Obama's girl and a woman and a black woman. So the media was following her around shopping and they tried to give her this boost. And then everyone got to know her and they thought, oh, my gosh, she's horrible. Kamala Harris is terrible. There's no relatability. There's no likability. She comes off as a hag who will just say anything to get ahead. Nobody likes Kamala Harris. Democrat woke politics and very likely doomed their chances in 2024. Hey, something to feel good about. Now, there's something else to feel good about. It's the first TV app. Yeah, there's an app. 
right there. It's right there on your phone, right there on your TV. First TV app. You know what? You can watch me all day long. Because not only can you watch the first live with Buck, Dana, Bill, me, Mike, not only can you watch the first TV live, you have the shows on demand at your fingertips. Go get the first TV app today and enjoy me. All right. We got Frank McCormick coming up next. Looks like a good healthy education system we have going on here in this country. Joining me now to talk about that is someone who would know Frank McCormick. He's an educator, historian, and writer, and he's been speaking out against CRT. Frank, I, I don't consider myself to be old. I mean, I'm 40, but I feel like just yesterday I was in school and I was just learning about reading and writing and arithmetic. When did all these nutballs take over? You know, I, I think what's happened, and thank you, Jesse, for having me on your show, uh, is that we've seen as universities have kind of been ideologically captured by uh, these radical ideologies that it's infiltrated teacher education programs, which has then been trickled down into our K-12 education system. Uh, it's kind of trickled down radicalization, if you'd like to call it that. Okay, so if they got the uh, teachers, if, they, if they're the ones educating the teachers, and we have these nut jobs educating the teachers, how do we get them back, Frank? Can we get them back? I'm not sure. Uh, but that's a really good question. I've, I've read estimates that 92 to 97 percent of teachers are left-leaning, progressive, liberal. Um, I think at this point, our K-12 education system has been ideologically captured, and it's really going to depend on a small minority of teachers to vocally speak out, expose what's going on, and challenge this. Now, you're an educator. Have you been catching a lot of flack for your stance? I can only imagine you have. Well, since this has been kind of a recent development for me over the summer, um, I've heard uh, inside tips. Um, one such was that they are aware they are not happy, um, and it was even suggested that they may do what was called a wellness check on me, um, which I, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds as if they think, you know, there must be something wrong with me, which... Maybe if you challenge back against the orthodoxy, that's true. Frank, tell me, I mean, you're a historian as well. Tell me how what I'm seeing right now is any different than any other communist takeover of a country that's always happened throughout history. Now, we don't use class. Ours is cultural. But I'm sorry, it looks identical to me. Yes, that's one of uh, the striking similarities I see is between this and uh, Mao's cultural revolution. Um, mm hmm What's really interesting is that one of the big influencers of what's called critical pedagogy, which is what a lot of this falls under, was named Paulo Freire. And he was a Brazilian communist, and uh, his books and his influence can be found in every school. And he actually looked to the Cultural Revolution as a source of inspiration uh, for what was happening in education. Tell us about Mao's cultural revolution. I know about it, but many people do not. They don't even know what you're talking about. What was it? Mao's cultural revolution was uh, just what it sounds like. It was a revolution within the culture that was uh, led by students. Uh, Mao believed that the old Chinese traditional culture had to be destroyed uh, to make way for their new revolutionary regime. So it began from the bottom up with students where they were essentially radicalized and encouraged to destroy the four olds of Chinese culture. And what happened was they started dividing people into classes. You had red classes and black classes. The red classes were the revolutionary classes. They were the quote unquote good guys. The black classes were the uh, bad guys. And so the... They stratified society into these different classes and uh, basically created an enemy within Chinese society. And then students began to attack first verbally through ideas and then physically 
uh, leading up to uh, many, many deaths, uh, executions, and so forth. Uh, anyone who was considered conservative, a landowner, anti-revolutionary, you name it. Uh, people were forced to denounce themselves, to denounce their families for their sins. Uh, you could be, just by your identity, uh, classified as an enemy of the Chinese people. Surely that kind of thing could never happen here, though, Frank, right? I mean, our college students definitely aren't primed to do something like that. Well, that's what that's what concerns me. That's why I, I started, uh, you know, my website and, and this kind of movement is I have grave concerns that we are seeing the early stages of our own cultural revolution. And um, it was about a year ago where I really started to get concerned during the riots of 2020, seeing the rhetoric, the language, how people were interacting with each other and then seeing it in, uh, spread to our schools explicitly that I knew something had to be done. What, how do we? How do normal people fight back against the weaponization of language? I mean, they're they're so good at at demonizing their opponents and making certain truths completely off limits. How does the normal person fight back against that? It's hard. I think one thing you can do is you can um, learn exactly the rhetorical strategies, uh, the logical fallacies they're using. Call them out on it. Don't necessarily engage back with the substance of the arguments because you're always going to lose. Call out exactly what they are doing. Repeatedly call it out. Um, that they're setting up straw men, that they are using new speak, they have you know, changed the definition of words, keeping the power of the word but uh, using it in a new way. Uh, that's what I believe is the best way to approach it. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Time to lighten the mood. Next. You know, they say attitude is everything, and it's such an old, worn-out phrase that people don't really use it very much anymore. But I will tell you this. It's true. I've worked a thousand crappy jobs in my lifetime from washing dishes and washing cars and construction and all kinds of things. You name a crappy job, I've had to do it in my life. And one thing I have absolutely noticed, the people around you who smile, they're living happy lives no matter what they do. I saw this video and I thought, you know what? Here's the man with the right attitude. That's pretty stinking awesome. So I know what you're saying, Jesse. Well, how can I do that? My job sucks, or my husband sucks, or my wife sucks, or life sucks, or whatever. Listen to me. This actually works. Believe me, it does. Because I have days, well, not so much now, because now I just talk to you on TV for a living, but I've had plenty of days where I didn't want to go to work, right? You wake up, you don't want to go to work. Try this. It works. Just smile. Just smile. You'll find putting the smile on your face can actually change your whole mood. I'll see you tomorrow.